I'm Ken Zellin with Macintosh Lab, and I'm here to talk about Macintosh's C55 and C2800 preamps. There's a lot to talk about. The C2800 replaces the model C2700, and the C55 replaces the C53. These have big shoes to fill since they were two of our best-reviewed and best-selling preamp models. They both have been raved about in the audio press. The C2800 is the latest model in a long and distinguished line of metered, tube-type preamps that started with the C2200. And the C55 is the latest solid-state preamp with essentially the same feature set as their tube-type brothers. This new generation has a long list of enhancements that will dramatically broaden the appeal of these two models. But first, let's do a quick review of what's made the C53 and C2700 so desired the last few years. These features are all retained in the new models. They utilize an electronic volume control with over 200 steps of adjustment that never needs cleaning, maintains precise channel balance at every setting, yet needs only one turn from 0 to 99. It's the very best volume control in the industry. The input and output switching is done in sealed glass cylinders filled with inert gas and located adjacent to the input and output jacks being switched. We bring the switch to the music, not the music to the switch. The result is dramatically lower noise. They feature heavy-duty input and output jacks that can easily handle the heaviest of cables. The solid-state version has an 8-band equalizer allowing you to be in control of the sound you hear. It's very useful for problem room acoustics and or older recordings. The tube model has bass and treble controls accessed through the trim setting menu and their individual per input. You can turn the bass up a bit for movies, boost treble for radio listening, and the tone controls can be bypassed for your music streamer and CD player. It will remember all those settings. Both come standard with our DA2 Quad Balance DAC module. It's removable and upgradable as digital technology progresses. They have three sets of preamp outputs, two of which are front panel switched. That's great for adding extra amps for buy or tri amping, speakers in other rooms, or connecting subwoofers. More and more components feature balanced XLR inputs and outputs because they block noise intrusion through cables. These models have three sets each of balanced inputs and outputs. Macintosh preamps have featured two turntable inputs for years. You can connect one high-end table with a moving coil cartridge and a second turntable for the family to use with a sturdier moving magnet cartridge. The adjustment of a preamp to suit the specs of a certain phono cartridge is called phono loading, and we've allowed you to adjust the loading by remote control while music plays with readout on the display of the result. Incredible. The chassis are built in two sections, two boxes sharing one faceplate. The top section is where pure analog amplification takes place, and it's fully shielded. All noise-producing parts are housed in the bottom chassis. That's the digital circuits and power supply. That way they can't interfere with the delicate analog music. The setup menu allows you to dive deep into customization. You can rename inputs, delete unused inputs, configure the pass-through function, configure the preamp outputs, and disable the auto-off circuit if desired, such as on a showroom floor. 
The C-2700 has appealed to tube buffs, while the C-53, which is all solid state, is perfect for those who don't ever want to have to replace tubes. It's our set-it-and-forget-it model. Okay, it's time to see what's new in the C-55 and C-2800 models. Both can be controlled through your home's network using the Macintosh Connect app. That means you can, from any room or even outside network permitting, adjust the trim menu, tone settings, balance, volume, and a whole host of other settings. If there's a contemporary Macintosh disc player or radio tuner connected to the system with a data cable, it too can be app controlled, even from another room or even outside. You'll want to hardwire your home network into this jack on the preamp to take advantage of app control. And new features are in development to make Macintosh Connect even more flexible. A new universal phono circuit has been designed. That means that instead of one each dedicated moving magnet and moving coil phono input, these new models have two phono inputs, each independently adjustable in gain, resistance, and capacitance for any combination of moving magnet and or moving coil cartridges. That's flexibility. And the maximum gain has been increased 4 decibels for use with even very low output moving coil cartridges. Amazingly, this better performing, higher gain, more flexible phono section is a simpler circuit than before. You can see that on the top of the C2800, where 4 tubes do the work of the previous circuit's 6 tubes. That means even greater reliability. A processor loop has been added, and it has many uses. It's the perfect place for C2800 owners to add an MQ112 equalizer if they desire more sophisticated tone controllability, or you could connect an MEN220 room correction device there. It can also be used with a cassette deck, even three-head models. You can monitor tapes while they record. It can act as a tape monitor function. The same applies for owners of reel-to-reel -reel decks. They too can record, play, and monitor through the processor loop. Owners of other devices, like this dynamic range expander, will be able to connect and switch their devices in and out of circuit. Preamp Output 2 is the perfect place to connect powered subwoofers, and it's labeled for that. You can turn the audio to the subwoofer on and off with the front panel Output 2 button, or even by remote control. And if there's a single subwoofer in the system, you have the option to run a single mono cable to it and set Output 2 to mono in the setup menu, so it'll receive both channels. It gets even better. When a subwoofer is simply connected to a system with full-size speakers, bass will come out of three locations at once, creating hot spots and dead spots for bass in the room, since the waves can cancel at certain distances and angles. We can now take care of that. And deep bass notes mean very large cone movements in your main speakers. This can lead to distortion at high volumes, or at worst, speaker damage if the volume is set too high. We can take care of that. These preamps have active high and low pass filters that can be set to remove the deepest bass frequencies from the main outputs. With many speakers, you'll want to set it to 50 Hz. Below that frequency, the subwoofer will take over, and those frequencies will be kept out of your main amp and speakers. This can dramatically reduce distortion in the main speakers for cleaner and tighter bass. And the power handling of the main speakers may go way up, 
since the woofer cones are unburdened from the large motion of deep bass frequencies. Planar and full-range electrostatic speakers will gain a big dynamic range advantage with these preamp filters. Since both high-pass and low-pass crossover filters are available through the multiple preamp outputs, you can also bi-amplify using individual high and low frequency amplifiers. Each amp will only see the frequency range it's amplifying. We've added an output offset feature, so you can even adjust the relative levels from the high and low frequency outputs. Here we show a bass amp with twice the available power of the mid-high frequency amp, so we would lower the low frequency gain by 3 dB for perfect balance of sound. The filters in these preamps are not acting as a crossover in the usual sense. Bi-wireable speakers have been designed with crossovers built in to transition the sound between their woofers and mid-high frequency drivers. And the crossover points have been chosen so that the sum of the outputs of the drivers creates a flat frequency response. We don't want to change that response. But we do want to remove most of the mids and highs from entering the woofers amplifier, so we don't waste power. And we want to prevent the mid-high frequency amp from seeing deep bass, especially if it's a tube amp, since no woofer is connected to that amp, and an unloaded tube amp is not a happy amp. That's where the built-in high-pass and low-pass filters in the preamp do their magic. Just look up the crossover frequency of your speaker's woofer in your speaker owner's manual. In this case, it's 800 Hz. Next, find the closest center frequency setting available in the preamp. The setting is not critical at all. In this case, we'll use 900 Hz. The woofer amp will be allowed to receive frequencies well beyond the speaker's internal crossover frequency, so it won't be interfered with. But high frequencies will be blocked, so power isn't wasted and deep bass will be removed from signals entering the mid-high frequency amp. But again, the critical speaker's crossover frequency area remains undisturbed, yet the tube amp is protected from an unloaded situation. It's a brilliant design. When not bi-amping, but when a subwoofer is used, a 50 Hz filter can be inserted into the signal path of the main amplifier. This helps your main speakers handle more power, have lower distortion, and saves your main amp from having to amplify frequencies that your subwoofer can handle best. Most speakers will sound cleaner when using the 50 Hz filter. Use the 100 Hz filter if the main speakers are small or have limited bass power handling. Set the woofer's crossover to the same frequency to start and then play around with the subwoofer's crossover a bit to achieve the best sound. With all these new features, it'll be upgrade time for many Mac owners. Whether it's the tape recording enthusiast, vinyl lover, processor gadget owner, subwoofer owner, or smart home control client, these models offer a combination of immense connectivity, flexibility, and performance that can't be found anywhere else. Thank you.